In this video, we will consider the derivative as a rate of change. Given a function f of t, we have seen how one interpretation of the derivative of f with respect to t evaluated at a is the instantaneous rate of change of f with respect to t at a specific point t equals a. So in this video, we are going to consider some examples of how the rate of change interpretation influences how we analyze the functions, their graphs, and their derivatives. Suppose we have a function s of t equals t cubed minus 12t squared plus 36t minus 4, and that represents the position of a naked mole rat as it crawls horizontally in an underground tunnel. Now in reality, this mole rat could be some sort of particle moving in space, or it could be something involving a chemical reaction. But in this case, we're just going to use the example of a naked mole rat as it crawls horizontally in an underground tunnel. So in this particular function, t represents time, which is measured in seconds, and s represents the distance, or the position, measured in centimeters from the nesting chamber. When s is positive, the mole rat is to the right of the nesting chamber. When s is negative, the mole rat is left of the nesting chamber. And we're going to assume that the nesting chamber is a point, or specifically the origin within the underground tunnel. Given s of t equals t cubed minus 12t squared plus 36t minus 4, we're going to give a detailed analysis of the path of the naked mole rat. And specifically, we're going to look at the position of the mole rat at various times. We'll consider the velocity at various times and indicate the mole rat's direction and speed. We want to know when the mole rat's velocity is equal to zero and what happens to the position of the mole rat when velocity is equal to zero. When is the mole rat slowing down? Or in other words, when is that mole rat speed decreasing? And finally, we want to consider the mole rat's acceleration. Specifically, when is it equal to zero? And again, what happens with the no naked mole rat at these times? So let's first consider the position function. Now the position function, again, it has a unit associated with it. So this is centimeters um, from the nesting chamber. Now if we look at a graph of this function, so let's, let's take what we see in this particular graph and translate it to the position of the mole rat at the underground tunnel. So for example, if t is equal to 0, s of 0 is negative 4. So at time equals 0, the mole rat is 4 centimeters to the left of the nesting chamber. If I evaluate this function at time equals 1, the mole rat is all the way over here at 21 centimeters to the right of the nesting chamber. At t equals 2, the mole rat is at 28 centimeters, and I can continue to, to evaluate this at additional time values. So for example, if I continue and do uh, time equals 3, the mole rat is actually back here at 23 centimeters. At s equals 4, it's um, at 12 centimeters to the right of the nesting chamber. At 5, it's at 1. At 6, it's back at negative 4, or 4 centimeters to the left of the nesting chamber. At 7, it's up at 3. Or at 8 seconds, it's at 28 centimeters. 28 centimeters to the right of the nesting chamber. So if I were to map this out, what's going on in this underground horizontal tunnel, the mole rat goes from here to here at two seconds, it turns around, goes back to the left, up at six seconds, it again turns back to the right, and then it continues to go. Now let's identify the velocity of the mole rat at various times and indicate its direction and speed. We know that velocity is the instantaneous rate of change of position with respect to time, and we have various notation that we can use for the velocity. So we know that velocity is the derivative of the position function with respect to time, or we can say that it's ds dt, which also means it's the limit as h goes to zero of s evaluated at t plus h minus s evaluated at t divided by h. That's the definition of the derivative. But knowing that we're dealing with uh, this naked mole rat in a horizontal tunnel, we can associate units with that, uh, with that derivative or with the instantaneous rate of change. Knowing that position is measured in centimeters and time is measured in seconds, we know that the units associated with the velocity must be centimeters per second. So therefore, 
the velocity of the naked mole rat at time t is going to be the derivative of our function t cubed minus 12t squared plus 36t minus 4 centimeters per second or 3t squared minus 24t plus 36 centimeters per second. Now, in all, in all honesty, you should be able to evaluate the instantaneous rate of change of s of t equals t cubed minus 12t squared plus 36t minus 4 using the definition of derivative. So you should be able to set this up and perform the algebra and then evaluate the limit. It, evaluate the limit when we know that s prime of t is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of s of t plus h minus s of t divided by h. And then, and then when you do that, you should get the same result. V of t equals 3t squared minus 24t plus 36 centimeters per second. If we go ahead and graph the velocity function of the mole rat at these various times, we get this parabola. Okay, But this doesn't maybe make a whole lot of sense in terms of the, the horizontal movement of the mole rat. So let's, let's again pause and think about what that means. It's time. So at t equals 0, the velocity at 0 is going to be 36 centimeters per second. At t equals 1, the velocity of the mole rat is 15. So it is slowed down. At t equals 2, the velocity of the mole rat is actually 0 centimeters per second. At t equals 3, the velocity at 3 seconds is a negative 9 centimeters per second. At t equals 4, the velocity is negative 12 centimeters per second. t equals 5, the velocity is a negative 9. At t equals 6, the velocity is 0. And then at t equals 7, the velocity is 15 centimeters per second. And at t equals 8, the velocity is 36 centimeters per second. So the velocity at time 0 starts off positive, large and positive. Then it decreases until t equals 2, where the velocity is 0. Then it's negative until time equals 6, and then it becomes positive again. If we again take a look at the graph of this parabola, we can see that between 0 and 2, the velocity was positive. Okay, And at, at this time, the naked mole rat was moving to the right in that horizontal tunnel. Between t equals 2 and t equals 6, the velocity was negative, indicated by the fact that the velocity function is below the horizontal axis. But we also noted that the mole rat was moving to the left within that underground tunnel. And after t equals 6, it was moving back to the right, and the velocity was positive again. So the sign of the velocity function tells us the direction that the mole rat is traveling, either to the right or to the left. And then the value of the velocity function in absolute value tells us the speed. We've already seen that the graph of v of t equals 3t squared minus 24t plus 36 crosses that horizontal time axis when t is equal to 2 and when t is equal to 6. We also we're able to plot those points. So we know that when we set this velocity function equal to 0, we indeed get that um, the velocity is 0 when time is equal to 2 and time is equal to 6. So here's an, an, an algebraic approach to that. So we could see that when the velocity was equal to 0 at time equals 2 seconds and time equals 6 seconds, that the mole rat actually stopped for an instant and changed direction. So in summary, when the velocity was greater than 0, the mole rat was moving to the right within the tunnel. When the velocity is less than zero, or negative, the mole rat is moving to the left within the tunnel. When it's equal to zero, the mole rat has come to a stop and changes direction within the tunnel. Now, suppose we want to consider the times at which the mole rat is slowing down. In other words, at what time, or what times, is the mole rat's speed decreasing? Now, if you recall, the velocity function was a parabola that opened up so you might think, well, don't I just consider from 0, time equals 0, until the vertex of that parabola that the mole rat's speed is decreasing. But that's not actually the case. Remember that the speed is the absolute value of the velocity. 
So if I'm taking the absolute value of 3t squared minus 24t plus 36 centimeters per second, its graph looks like this because we take anything that's negative and we reflect it over the horizontal time axis. So in this case, the speed is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 2. And then that's at time equals 2. That's when the mole rat stops and changes from going right to the left. And then it increases in speed until 4 seconds, at which case it's still going to the left, but then it starts to slow down as it prepares to change directions again. So in reality, the, the mole rat speed is decreasing between 0 and 2 and between 4 and 6. And finally, let's consider the mole rat's acceleration, specifically when is it equal to 0 and what is what's happening with the mole rat at these times. Acceleration is the instantaneous rate of change of the velocity with respect to time, or dv dt. So knowing that we have the derivative of the velocity function, using the definition of derivative, we can see that this is the limit as h goes to 0, v evaluated at t plus h minus v evaluated at t all over h centimeters per second per second, which then we can simplify those units so that we get the limit as h goes to 0, v of t plus h minus v of t all over h centimeters per second squared, which we can also interpret as the second derivative of our position function. So therefore, the acceleration is going to be the derivative of 3t squared minus 24t plus 36, which is 6t minus 24 centimeters per second squared. Solving for t when 6t minus 24 is equal to 0, we get t equals 4. Or we get this line. Again, let's interpret this in terms of the other graphs that we have. If we consider the graph of the position function, t cubed minus 12t squared plus 36t minus 4, Recall that the velocity is the derivative of this position function, but the derivative also works with, it communicates the slope of the tangent lines to the function. So again, if we think about the slope of the tangent lines to the function at various points, we can see that the slope of the tangent lines is also going to be the velocity at a particular time. So we can see initially that the slopes are positive, but they're decreasing until time equals 2, in which case we have a horizontal tangent line, after which the slopes are negative, then they're getting close to 0 again, but still negative, then there's 0, and then positive. So what's happening at t equals 4? Well, we see at t equals 2, the slope was 0, then the slope is negative, continues to be negative, and then at t equals 6, it's 0 again. And at t equals 4, the slope of the tangent line is actually the largest negative number when we consider the slope. And that makes sense when I consider the graph of the velocity function. So again, from 0 to 2, the slopes were positive, slopes of the tangent lines of, a posi of the position function, but they were decreasing until 2, in which case we had a horizontal tangent line. Between t equals 2 and t equals 6, the slopes were negative. In other words, that position function was decreasing. The slope of the tangent line was most negative at t equals 4. And then after t equals 6, the slopes were positive again. Again, we're talking about the slopes of the position function. So the acceleration equals 0 happens when the velocity is most negative. Or in other words, we're having a minimum in our velocity function. The graph of the acceleration function is communicating the rate of change or the slope of the velocity function. So from 0 to 4, we saw we see that the velocity was decreasing. In other words, its slopes, the slope of the tangent lines to the velocity function, were negative from 4 
for t greater than values of 4, the velocity was increasing, or in other words, the slope of the tangent lines to the velocity function were positive. So again, t equals 4 is where we were changing from velocity decreasing to velocity increasing. Returning to the naked mole rat moving horizontally in the underground tunnel, at t equals 4, this is when acceleration was, is equal to 0, which is where the velocity changes from decreasing to increasing. So in conclusion, the position function communicates the distance the mole rat or some other particle is from a particular point, namely the origin. The velocity function is the derivative of the position function and communicates the direction and the speed of the object. The acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity function or the second derivative of the position function, and this acceleration function communicates the rate of change of the velocity function with respect to time. A lot of times we see these terms, position, velocity, and acceleration, particularly when we're considering the movement of a particle. We're not always going to be um, working with time and velocity. The rate of change must be interpreted in terms of the context, which may involve pressure, temperature, the economy, or some other context overall.